Well, when it comes to using technology, my next guest says we must first consider who's using it. Mark Taylor is a thought leader in leveraging new tools in the classroom, and I visited with him about the keys to teaching what he calls Generation Next. Well, Mark, as adults, we always like to say the next generation is this or that and not what we are. But you say the next generation that you've coined truly is that. That is what all of my research shows. Uh, everyone who looks at this generation says they're different. Hound Strauss says they're millennials and they're different. Uh, I contend that as a result of the different parenting model that was started by the baby boomers, the self-esteem programming, the parent is friend, the choices and options, the constant programming, which is the constructed childhood instead of childhood as something that naturally occurs out in the community, that we see a very different cohort of young people. Their engagement with technology, the availability of technology from social media to text messaging to information availability has also created a very different group of young people, whether we see them in our families or whether we see them as students or as we see them going into the workplace. Let's start off with education. What is that going to mean for our classrooms? Um, but what does it mean for our classrooms? It's here, right? It, it, they, they, are, they are here now and it's, we have pretty abundant evidence that K-12 education and higher education are both struggling with this cohort of young people. Um, I've written several articles about parents, the helicopter parents, the snowplow parents who are intervening in their children's academic careers. Now you mentioned digital learning. How different is today's digital learner than myself that was up at a blackboard? Um, the digital learner, the young person today who might spend an average of eight hours a day or more with media, who lives in a social world dominated by text messaging and social networking, who sees all information available at all times. When we were going to school, the teacher would say, clear off your desk, get out a pencil, sit here and take this test. Because the only thing you know is what you can generate in the quiet of this room from your own mind. That is manifestly disorienting to the digital young person because that's not their world. And with iPads and iPhones and computers, they have access to every piece of information. When are they ever going to be in a situation like that? So they just don't understand it. Um, they don't understand why someone would want to stand up in front of the room and explain it when a podcast is available. They don't understand why they need to know it if they can access it at other places at other times. One of their greatest strengths that we have a hard time appreciating is how collaborative they are. And w we don't see it because it doesn't look like the way we collaborate. It's posting, it's blogging, it's tagging, it's passing tweets on. Very collaborative, but on a digital level. But we can leverage that. So will some of the same challenges that we're seeing in education, whether it be secondary or higher ed, will those just transfer to the workforce as this generation next becomes the generation, replaces and, us boom, baby boomers. And, and you know, I have written an article on workplace readiness in this generation. A lot of employers are being challenged as the consumer student comes into the workplace as the consumer employee. That's not what you can do for the company, but what can the company do for me? What's one of the greatest ironies right now is that in times of record unemployment, employers report that they can't find the workers with the qualifications that they want either the academic credentials in technical fields or the workplace readiness in terms of showing up, staying busy, responsible for outcomes. So 
even though the consequences of the educational practices are showing up when they go to the workplace, um, the workplaces are having to do some things to adjust to this generation of young people. And I've had employers tell me, well, by God, we not changing. It's my business, so it's either going to be my way or the highway. And I point out that people who can't learn to leverage the strengths of this generation of young people and, very candidly, to accommodate some of their expectations for the workplace are going to be on an endless treadmill of turnover. As students get more responsible for their own learning, then they will be better employees because they will be more responsible for workplace expectations. The passive learner is not developing responsibility, so why would we expect them to be responsible at work? So we hope that changes in those educational practices would lead to a better prepared workforce.